<coughs> welcome friends to this meditation workshop in rice lake this 3 day event is intended to share with you my experiences in meditation it is not the intention to say that in 3 days one can learn meditation meditation is a very long process when we become seekers of the truth seekers of our own true self seekers of where we really belong seekers of our true home then we find meditation as one of the methods or means to achieve that goal this is not the only method this is the uh, this is the basic method it is the elementary class on the way to our true home as i go along i will explain to you what else exists besides meditation to take us to our true home but as we cannot start without the basic training therefore we use meditation even meditation is a long course it it is not 3 days it's not 3 months it's not 3 years very often it's 3 lifetimes the different ma- masters and mystics who have practiced meditation they have said that meditation can take as many as 3 4 lifetimes that we prepare ourselves the meditation the word meditation is only means to meditate upon something we are all meditators already we meditate upon the things of the world we think about the things in the world and that is why we are meditating on the things of the world we meditate on other people and that is also meditation thinking about somebody is also meditating upon that person the difference between the worldly meditation and spiritual meditation is in spiritual meditation you meditate on the spirit on your own self and not on anything outside of yourself because in the spiritual path we want to discover who we are we want to find out why we are here why is human life created what is the meaning of life that they say and we have to find answers to these questions these questions arise naturally in us if we are seekers of the ultimate truth if we are seekers of the true home to which we belong these questions come automatically if i have to go back to my home why did i leave it why am i here why are so many of us here why are so different from each other all these questions come up during the life of a seeker and as one tries to find answers to them it's also considered meditation when we meditate upon the answers that we are getting to our questions we meditate with our thinking thinking process we have got a very useful device installed in our heads called our mind our mind is a thinking machine it thinks all the time it's a very efficient useful machine because it never stops it keeps on thinking so long as we have life in this human body so that is why we have an efficient machine that is thinking within us and we use it to meditate upon the world as well as meditate upon question that we have in our head when we think about these questions we try to find answers through the mind the mind has a little problem in finding true answers and the problem is it can only think in terms of time and space and can only think in terms of cause and effect these three things time space and cause and effect are essential features of the mind mind works and all thoughts work within this framework there is not possible to think of something outside of these three parameters of the mind and that is why if we have to think of something that is without cause mind is incapable of doing it if we have to think of something that is not in time the mind is not capable of doing it if we want to think of something that is not in the space mind cannot think of it 
that is why the mind has big limitations in trying to understand some of the true reality which may lie beyond time and space and beyond causation so that is why the mind is not the right tool to discover our own self or to discover our true home but we try to use the mind and think the mind can find all the answers so when the mind tries to find answer through thinking we get very confused because the mind cannot find the explanation for contradictions that appear in our life the contradictions appear because we make great effort one day to do something and does it work next day by accident it works what happened to the mind something did not work with our own effort the maximum effort and something else happened and it worked so we now the mind cannot explain there at all the mind cannot explain how something that has no obvious cause has happened that is why the mind is very restricted in discovering things that lie beyond the scope of the mind and i want to make it clear that time and space like everything else are also creations they are part of creation we are not talking of creation when we want to find our true home we are talking of the power this area the whatever it is that created these time space and the other creation so to go beyond time space we cannot use the mind but we are so used to using the mind not to, not for a little while we have been using the mind for our life for our survival for doing everything in this life for several lifetimes maybe millions of lifetimes we have created minds which are so programmed to always say we can find by thinking by reasoning by rationality we can find answers to all the questions that is not true that is why we get stuck and that is why we get confused and we don't proceed any further when we are seekers we keep on seeking and when we find the futility of using the mind to find a true answers then we look for something else and that is when we get guided by something that is been created for us called a human being who is different from us and we call him a perfect living master how is that human being different from us the human being is just like us made of the same elements made with the same body same sense perceptions same mind and same soul like ourselves then how do we call him different from us is because of his awareness that what he is aware of is beyond the mind and also what is in the mind this is awareness our awareness right now is restricted to what we behold with the mind and we have some awareness hidden inside we don't use that awareness too much it does come up sometimes but not too much when we try to make an effort to find something when we try to do something it is always the mind that comes forward not any other part of our talents that we have inside our head what are the other talents the other talents are those that belong to our own self without the mind our own self is sometimes been described as the soul or spirit the spiritual path deals with the soul or spirit it does not deal with the mind in fact it tells us that if you want to find your own soul or spirit you have to go beyond the mind so that is why the mind becomes an obstacle in a way and that which we have programmed for so long and are constantly using it instead of being helpful becomes an obstacle so that is why we have to find means that are beyond the mind we do experience some of those functions of our own soul right here the biggest function the most striking function of the soul of the spirit in this physical world and all worlds including beyond the mind is called love we write it l o v e love is a function that does not take place in time and space it does not take place 
by the law of cause and effect. It just happens. When we experience love for anybody, we know it comes suddenly, spontaneously, and does not follow any particular law of cause and effect. When the mind tries to analyze how did this happen, it tries to put even love into cause and effect and very often converts it, converts love into what the mind can understand, which is another word called attachment. Attachments are called love by the mind. Love is called love by the soul. So there's a big difference in the definition that the soul applies to mind and the mind applies to this word. Soul applies to love and the mind applies to love. Basic difference is when you have love that is experienced by the soul, you experience a beloved, the one you love. You don't experience yourself, you experience the beloved, that is love. When you have attachment, you experience yourself first and that to which you are attached later. You always have experience of two. <coughs> you will notice when a person is saying, I love you, I love you, again and again. First of all, what's the need for repetition so much if you really love somebody? Sometimes when you fall in love, you can't utter a word. You can't say anything. But when you keep on saying this, what are you really saying? I love you. I come first and then you come and we think that is love. These are attachments. We are using the word love for attachment all the time. I'm just telling you the distinction. We all have the capacity to love. We all have experience of love. And yet by mind, the use of the mind, we convert it into attachments. So that is why the function of the soul, which is love, is converted into a function of the mind, which is attachment. Similarly, the another function of the soul, and we call it intuition. Intuitive knowledge, intuitive awareness. Intuitive awareness occurs suddenly, spontaneously, without time. And most often, we notice it without cause. We don't know where it comes from, how it comes. It's a spiritual experience. When intuitive awareness comes to us, we sometimes call it a gut feeling. Just an just a inner feeling that we just feel like it, but we can't answer how we are feeling. There's no reason behind it. There's no mental gimmick around an intuition. Intuition is also the same as love and a function of the soul. But when we intuitively feel something, the mind reasons us out of it. Just like the mind converts love into attachment, the mind converts intuitive awareness into a reasoning process. And let us reason why you thought like that. And the mind very often, as you must have noticed in your own lives, rejects the intuitive awareness in favor of what it can make sense of, what it can reason out. So that is why we have these functions going on. We have a function, we look at something beautiful. The sense of beauty comes instantaneously, without time. It can come with no knowledge of space. And yet, when we try to analyze beauty, it becomes something that is an attachment, a function of the mind, an appreciation of the mind. It's an analysis of the mind. Some people have used these words analysis and synthesis to distinguish between the mind and the soul's functioning. That the mind always functions through analysis, tries to break down, tries to see things separate in order to understand them, and it thinks the understanding is the highest goal. To understand something is the highest thing we can do. That's what the mind believes. And therefore, when it experiences a thing is beautiful, I look at these flowers. How much time did it take me to appreciate the beauty of the flowers. Actually, no time. It was instantaneous. Now I say, what is making it beautiful? Oh, these different colors, and I look at it. That original experience of beauty has disappeared. And an analytical analysis is going on. What is making it beautiful? It's not the same thing. So that is why the mind seems to sometimes override our spiritual experiences. 
we are basically spiritual people we are souls we are not minds mind has been given to us to use mind is a great accessory mind is a super computer and like we use computers we use the mind but when we start identifying ourselves with the mind we make a very big mistake so that is why when we do spiritual seeking for our own self the role of the mind is very limited but it is essential because we are trained we are programmed we are indoctrinated over lifetimes and lifetimes that everything has to be found through the mind and through thinking so that is why the meditation process becomes long if this were not the situation meditation is a one moment step but because of this feature that is built into us that we have been built with these three things around us as part of our human experience the mind is an essential part of a human experience sense perceptions are an essential part of human experience a physical form is essential part of human experience these three are attached to our self our soul and the soul which is consciousness life only life can give us an experience if we are not living we don't get any experience we can have a whole body with all these three to intact so that is why life which is consciousness is soul so soul creates life for the mind soul creates life for the sense perceptions soul creates life for our body for the physical body and that is why we function in this world with these three attachments which we can use very effectively and we are supposed to use all these three as effectively as we can to enjoy to enjoy an experience which has been created by putting these attachments on up ourselves these little accessories upon our soul they are supposed to work together so to make life a great experience that is why we came here that is the whole purpose of life that we have got these experiences because of these attachments these accessories that have been added on to us without that we have experience is not the same experience supposing you had no mind no senses no body supposing you were merely souls you still would have experience of infinite intuitive knowledge you would still have experience of unlimited love you still have experience of unlimited beauty all these three combined are called the ultimate bliss that you can enjoy they're still there you can reach a state where you can have ultimate bliss and these functions are going on they don't belong to the mind or the senses or the body but in order to enhance these very things and to create a much greater variety of experiences we have been given these extra things the mind the sense perceptions and the body and since we are wearing them around ourselves the soul wears these around itself therefore we sometimes call them our three bodies that we are wearing the physical body is the outside body that we can all see and work and move around in this physical world do our things with the physical body this is the outermost garment of a body is they are wearing one of the three bodies the inner body consists of sense perceptions the power of seeing touching tasting smelling does not belong to this physical body at all if it only belonged to the physical body we could not imagine anything we could not see anything in imagination we could not fly in imagination we could not have any dream we could not have any inner experiences where we see that we can do all these things and use our sense perceptions sense perceptions are separate from the physical body and since we are only used to thinking of a body around us we call the sense perceptions also a body and we term it an astral body the astral body consists of nothing but the soul the mind and sense perceptions the only thing missing is physical matter the rest is the same it does not mean that there is a separate body that somewhere existing this is just our own sense perceptions when separated from the physical matter become the astral body the astral body means we are the same that's functioning now we are using the same sense perceptions covered by the physical body we are using the same mind same sense perceptions covered by physical body but 
if we did not have a physical body which we will not have when we die in physical form the inner self will still be there the inner self is not dependent on the physical body similarly the sense perception that constitute our inner self are also a body and if we take that body off we have the mind and the soul that is our self the mind is also like a body because it surrounds the soul the soul is within the mind and the mind operates by thoughts creating time and space around it and therefore the soul sits giving life to the mind and when we have only mind and soul we call it the causal body because all things experiences we are having here are caused there and if you have an experience of the causal body you will get answers to questions such as how was the world created why is the world created how is destiny made why are we all having different destinies what is karma all these are created at the causal plane with the mind and the soul it's just a question of these functions being divided at different levels so when we have the mind as a causal body and we don't have the causal body even we discover who we are first time we can say who we are the self who we are as a self till then we do not know who we are we are calling our coverings we are calling our garments which we are wearing as our self this missed identification of the self with the body is causing the biggest problem for us if we did not misidentify just remember if we knew at all times that we are just like i'm wearing a jacket i should remember i'm wearing a body and i'm wearing sense perception i'm wearing a mind i will always be conscious that they, these are covering is upon myself and not really myself so that is why we can discover ourselves only when we can lose the awareness of these three bodies right now we are constantly aware of these coverings and therefore we do not know who we are and we are saying know thyself socrates said know thyself find yourself and people wonder we know ourselves what is it what to know we know our name we know who we are we know where we live no the body's name is that the body lives there not you therefore to discover the self we have to find a means by which we can experience ourselves without these three bodies the purpose of meditation is to help us in that the purpose of meditation is to help us in discovering our own self and if you understand how these three bodies are covering the self it is easy to understand meditation meditation is to temporarily lose the awareness of these bodies temporarily that means we don't have to die to find the inner body what they call dying while living we can be living sitting in this physical body and by losing awareness of these we can discover what is inside that should be simple it is a simple process the process is if you can lose awareness of your physical body and keep awareness of everything else you will know exactly what the astral body is and what and who you are as an astral body if you can lose the awareness of the astral body you will know what the causal body is if you lose awareness of causal body you will know who you are this simple process and then the method that meditation uses is a method to lose awareness of the cover outside that's all nothing else meditation is designed so that we can use a method a technology which will help us to become unaware of the outer self and no more of the inner self that's it now how can that be done we have been given the great gifts all of us have those gifts those beans by which we can do it what are the means if we have to become unaware of the outer body to find the inner body what are the means given to us for that there are two great means we are all gifted with the first is the power to put attention where we like our awareness <clears throat> awareness is a general thing we are all aware there is a hall we are sitting in 
but your attention can be focused on one thing or the other. You're putting attention on me to listen to me. I can put my attention on flowers and appreciate them. I can put attention on anybody else. Attention can be managed, manipulated by our will. And wherever we like to put our attention, we can put our attention there. Therefore, we have great means of using attention. And we can put our attention wherever we like. We use it every day. We want to read a book. We put our attention on the book. We want to see, see somebody. We put attention on that person. We want to, in, in our mind, make a plan that tomorrow we want to go and visit that place. We put our attention with our mind on that place without even seeing it. Attention can be used physically and in imagination and in thought in every way. Attention is a great power. Where you place your attention is a very great power. And that is the great gift given to us in order to discover our own self. The power of putting our attention where we like. Then the matter becomes simple. We have all our life put our attention on subjects and objects outside. Let us put our attention inside. Inside ourselves. Inside where? I'll tell you that. But the object of meditation is to put your attention inside on yourself, not outside. So long as we can do that, we have a successful meditation. So how do we put the attention inside? The same way we put attention somewhere else. I want to put my attention right now in Italy at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It comes into my imagination. And I am thinking of that. I put my thought. I am imagining that, I put my sense perception, visualization. I am putting my sense perceptions and my thoughts on something I want to put attention on. It is not even here, it is somewhere else. Here we are talking of putting attention on something that is the closest to us, not so far away. The closest point to us, nothing can be closer than us, is our own self. Nothing can be closer to our own self. Not the body, our self. From where we are doing these things like I am talking, thinking, feeling, appreciating. All these functions I am doing are from the self. So we have to just find out if the self is functioning inside, which doesn't take time to know. It's not functioning from any air or some place outside. It's functioning from within the body. Then the next step is which part of the body is it functioning from? So when we carefully examine that where are we thinking from, where are we making plans from, where are we using our mind from, where are we actually sitting inside the body, very quickly we come to know it's not the hand and the feet, not our legs or arms, it's not the, even the torso of the body, it's the head. That narrows down the field into a very small area of the head, the small head on our big bodies and we can now find which is the spot inside. Now that step is even easier. We want to examine what point inside we have to put our attention on. We close our eyes and can contemplate and think, think to ourselves, where could I be operating? Am I on the right side or left side or in forward or backwards? It will take you five minutes to find out you are on neither side, you are at the center. You are the center of the head. It doesn't take long. It's how you feel. It's not some, some uh, anatomy to be studied. It is where do you feel? Where do you think from in the head? Is it in the front or at the back or on the sides? You'll find no, it's in the center. That is exactly where in the wakeful state in a human body we are functioning from as a soul. It is so clear that we know exactly the point where the self is. And therefore, we also know that we have to put attention on the self. That is good meditation. If we can do that, we are good meditators on the self. We'll discover ourselves. So, how do we put attention there? We use the second gift to us, the power of imagination. We can imagine we are there. That's not difficult. 
we can imagine we are sitting somewhere else we can also imagine we are sitting in the head we can imagine we are sitting on top of this building we can imagine we are sitting anywhere we can also imagine we are sitting inside the head if we can imagine that we are sitting inside our head pure imagination then we are doing things inside our head i make it simple during these meditation exercises to say let us sit inside the head like we sit outside we are sitting on chairs okay make it an imaginary chair very simple where where you are thinking from where you are making this decision from in the center of the head it's only pure imagination that we can use to create objects that we were seeing outside as imaginary objects inside we still imagine we are like we are here that good enough we imagine that we have the same body we have here if we can imagine that we are sitting there the same body the whole of us the whole of us the body the thinking machine the power to see touch taste smell all of us have now gone and in our imagination sat inside our head in the center and it's an imaginative experience but what is actually happening by doing it you are drawing your attention to the center of your head the very secret of good meditation to draw your attention to the secret of the head so that is why it's so important to know that if you don't do this first step of imagining that you are sitting in the center of the head imagining you are sitting where you actually are operating in the wakeful state in a physical body the rest of the meditation will be useless if this step is not done if you are sitting somewhere else what will happen thoughts will be somewhere else you will know have no idea about where you are you have no idea where you are sitting this is something that has to be done in a wakeful state because we lose awareness of a body every night when we go to sleep if the only purpose of meditation was to lose awareness of the body we are doing it every night when we go to sleep we lose the awareness of our body and we think we are dreaming somewhere else that is not the purpose the purpose of meditation is to be unaware of the body and be continuously aware of where you are if you are unaware of the body which is in the center of the head as it happens that center of the head is between the eyes and behind the center of the forehead since it's between the eyes and you can still see with your imagination it has been called the third eye center the third eye center means nothing more than the center where the self is operating while you are in a wakeful state that's it therefore meditation is a very simple exercise we have made it very difficult for ourselves by trying to meditate through thoughts without sitting there which happens that we are scattered scattering our thoughts and going all over the world in our thoughts and we cannot meditate and make any useful meditation just sitting with your eyes closed and thinking of the rest of the world is not meditation no matter how long you sit meditation is only successful if you can place yourself behind the eyes first my master great master told me i should not start any practice of repeating words simran mantra anything listening to sounds ignore everything till you are well seated there at the third eye center and these things should be only done when you are well seated third eye center doesn't matter if it takes years to practice this because if you don't do it you're wasting your time what happens if you are repeating words without seating there your mind is roaming around remembering things thinking of everything in the world you are repeating the word with your tongue sometimes you are repeating the words even inwardly in your mind and second part of the mind is roaming all around the world what are you getting that is not meditation that is not spiritual meditation 
that is still meditation on the world is not what we are here for we are here for discovering our own self so that is why during the couple of days that we are here i am going to share with you every step that will be necessary to achieve the ultimate state where you discover your own self and your true home it does not mean that you will get it in two days it needs practice why does it need practice because we have programmed our mind otherwise otherwise would not need any practice otherwise our own natural self our natural consciousness could put it put itself to that place but the mind scatters us why is that because the mind was created for that purpose the mind was created to give us experience of time space and cause an effect in a created world it was not, nothing wrong with it it is the design to have an experience away from the limited experience of our own self and have an experience of other things at other levels of consciousness other types of experiences and there are very beautiful range of experiences possible look at the range of beauty and colors that we can find in this world if you walk through this world walk through nature there's so much to admire so much to wonder how it's created that is why every level if you go to the astral plane without physical matter you can see both matter and non matter at the same time more beautiful than this is un- the beauty that you can appreciate through creation is unlimited that's why we are here we are not here for any other purpose we are here just to admire and see the beauty of how creation can create these wonderful experiences for the self now we did not do what we were intending to do we were supposed to be here admiring enjoying the beauty of a creation but what are we thinking just because we wanted to make this experience absolutely real and to make it real we had to cut off our awareness of our own self and think this is the only reality that's how we make it real just for that reason we say oh it's a terrible place here we have got a bad karma here we are suffering here we are having painful experiences here yes they are there painful experiences are created negative experiences have been created by us in order to enhance the ap- uh, appreciation of the positive experiences this principle on which this creation took place was the principle of duality the principle of pairs of opposites to create an experience the opposite was created at the same time it doesn't matter if it's a matter and anti matter or it's pain and pleasure everything created here is in pairs of opposites and when you have an opposite you enhance the experience of the positive in fact if there's no opposite you may not and never have the experience of the positive at all so that is why it's a designed thing it's a designed thing that you should have the opposites ups and downs it's a roller coaster ride people love to go to a park and have a roller coaster but not the roller coaster of life it's the same thing enjoy it ups and downs of life is it designed like that but if somehow you are tired of it if you had enough of it there's a way to go back home and the way to go back home is to find out where the home is while you are still here while still in this physical body discover who you are discover where the true home is and you will find is the easiest thing to do if you discover it now then you leave the body you can go straight there if you want to have some little time on the way you can enjoy the journey back is a great ride back just there is a great ride here there is a great greater ride back to your true home so all i am sharing with you is that the process of meditation to be spiritual meditation is merely to place your attention in the head behind the eyes as the third eye center if you can do that you have done more than half the success of meditation people think that we have to meditate by repeating words the mantras and all that's very slow thing very small thing compared to discovering where you are operating from because the self is right there if you can sit behind 
you can discover where you are right now shall we begin are you all ready for meditation yes. please raise your hand if you are all ready for meditation okay we start from the basic in order not to may miss the location i'll suggest a simple way think this this body of yours is not you don't forget that this body of yours is not you you are inside the body therefore to make it easier for you not to identify every day you are calling this body yourself and a switch may take time so therefore to make the switch easy let us say think of the body as a house you are living in it's a house the torso the main house these are just arms and legs are attachments ignore them and over the torso there are six floors based on the six energy centers and you have in the sixth floor behind the eyes think of the sixth floor right below you and think of the staircase that is there to go down or an elevator that existed at the back in the spine make a good picture of this house of yours if you make a good picture of the house then you can also feel more easily that you are on the sixth floor sitting in the center of this beautiful room here during this exercise which we'll be doing never go to the lower centers until i tell you just for a visit otherwise to get the knowledge of the self in the wakeful state we stay behind the eyes not lower how many of you could imagine that the body is a house how many of you could imagine that you are sitting on the sixth floor of this house how many of you imagined it for little while and then you slipped out how many of you saw faces appear in front of you when you were sitting in the center how many of you felt you could not recognize those faces pretty good for first attempt maybe many of you made this attempt earlier this is uh, the real issue that we are not practicing enough of sitting at the center of our house imagining the house is a aid to it and it helps if you don't imagine then the mind scatters even more easily the faces that come in front and go which you saw are also your attachments your attractions and they come from outside some faces you don't recognize many of you raise your hands are coming from your faces of past life attachments and experiences during this process of meditation very often you will get visions and experiences of what happened in past lives because your inner self does not distinguish between this life and past life this body distinguishes when you're sitting in the body then you distinguish this is my life i only had this life this is the only life but when you're inside other lives will look like there is a continu continuity the reason for that is that the very imagination you used is a function of the astral self and not of the physical body and that astral self has lived much longer its average is 1000 to 3000 years of physical time so that is why you have had previous bodies and previous experiences which may come during meditation so don't be surprised by that this happens very often so now we'll do this again this time use another thing and that is called concentration of attention i mentioned attention now we do what is called concentration of attention concentration of attention means when you figure out where you are and what you're seeing try to stay there by concentrating your attention on that 
concentration of attention narrows the area in which your attention operates and concentration is an actual mental effort that you make it's a actually you can decide to concentrate attention on something by ignoring other things including what is happening in front ignoring excluding everything else that is called concentration of attention supposing i take a piece of paper and i say i want to concentrate my attention on this paper i look at it i look at it with greater concentration the more i will look at concentrate i will not know who else is sitting there this is the power of concentration of attention so that is why now when you put attention that you are in the center concentrate your attention on being there by ignoring what is what else is there ignoring any images coming in front don't watch them don't watch anything concentrate on being where am i even that imaginary self of yours sitting in the center on the chair or on the floor or whatever you have made up the mind concentrate on being there where you are narrow down to the center of the head so this will help you a lot so let's see if we can practice that now along with the first part how many you felt it was better this time this is a good good improvement how many you felt there was plenty of room in the sixth floor where you were sitting there were plenty of light there how many of you saw more light than you normally see with your eyes closed okay how many of you like that place where you sat can we make it little better by decorating it like you will decorate your own house if you decorate the place uh, place good best curtains you can think of for the side for the windows if you have any windows in that room whichever your imagination has created that chamber in which you are sitting nice rug carpet nice whatever your idea is of making something beautiful and attractive shall we try that if you like it will become an easier way to get back again and again because this will be our meditation chamber that will be the place where we will do all meditation from this point onwards not anywhere outside not on our chairs outside not on the floor not anywhere not any corner of a house not finding any particular room we have set up in our house for meditation only in this place therefore decorate it as best you like some people like um, incense that should be incense should be there in that room some people like whatever you are doing which you which is attractive for you to go and do your worship your meditation your puja anything you want to do should be done there now to make it successful so that is why let's decorate it so now let's do, spend a few minutes decorating our chamber of the third eye center or meditation chamber it we call it meditation chamber now because we will only do everything now from this point onwards in the meditation chamber nothing outside we are leaving outside because had enough of it now we want to find out something inside so please once again close your eyes how many of you think your chamber looks beautiful and you are attractive and you like to go there again and again thank you thank you from now onwards i will call our meditation chamber only that chamber you just made no other place every time we meditate now onwards will be there only in the center if you can stick to that it will be quick progress if you move away from that it will be slow it's very simple thing the whole secret is 
to hold your attention at the center of your third eye center which is right at where you are sitting in the chamber so that is why instead of confusing ourselves third eye the two eye whatever it's our meditation chamber our meditation chair or meditation um, uh, mat rug whatever we have is right in the center and we enjoy sitting there because everything we need for meditation for enjoying for admiring in a nice chamber that we made is right there so that is or uh, always going to be now the meditation place for us to be now since you have decorated so well how many of you had experience that when you were sitting there you were still thinking of things outside how many of you still were thinking of outside things even while you were sitting inside your chamber okay we have a find find a solution for that how many of you have been initiated into a mantra or a simran that you repeat holy words so so many of you already have a device what is the purpose of repeating mantra the purpose of repeating mantra is to make the mind constantly think of those words and so it won't think of other things that's the whole purpose it's a mechanical purpose we sometimes repeat mantra as magical words and all may be magical but the primary purpose of simran mantra to repeat is to keep the mind occupied in the repetition of words which we are directing the mind to do and not the mind on its own is doing other thoughts have been coming on their own by the mind other thoughts of other things um, other memories other uh, plans other things are coming automatically this is being directed by us when we repeat the words chosen by us or given to us by a master we are repeating words in order to squeeze out the other words of thought and that is why they should be repeated with full attention of the mind on those words if you just repeat the words sitting there and the mind still keeps on thinking they don't serve any purpose therefore it's important to repeat the words with your mind with full attention on the words and full attention on the words is gained by listening to them carefully that means it's not merely repetition far more important than repetition is listening to what you are repeating there is no better way to concentrate your attention on the words than by trying to listen to every word carefully so that is why we make it want we take advantage of these words of simran mantra and so on so that we can repeat them to listen to them and hold attention on them so mind will not think of other things too much which is a which is a distraction for us in our meditation when the mind start going back into worldly things we are trying to find something inside so those of you who have a mantra we will now have a session where you will use that mantra at the third eye center in the middle of your chamber where you designed it so beautifully sit comfortably and close your eyes not these eyes close your eyes inside where you are sitting and then repeat the mantra you these eyes can be closed very easily but right now you are having open eyes inside trying to decorate it trying to see where you are trying to see where you where your chair is where your place is now close your inner eyes repeat the words of your mantra or simran slowly slowly because if you repeat fast you won't listen to them repeat slowly each word so that you can listen to it and do a good job of listening to words not moving away from the center of your meditation chamber if you can do this successfully you will have made a big step forward close your eyes and begin how many of you think you got successfully done this session by repeating the word and listening to them 
how many of you still in spite of repeating and listening your mind was still thinking of other things outside see now we know what the problem is <laughs> that is the problem <laughs> that is where we need practice that is where we need time the mind is so used to spending all available time 24/7 on outside things we are trying to pull it inside and it won't leave its habit but the secret still is to use repetition of words and also concentrate attention on this listen, listening to the words i want to explain to you that these sense perceptions are created at the astral plane and we wear them after we have worn a mind and then we wear the sense perceptions or the astral self these sense perceptions then operate outside but there are two perceptions that continue even before these five were created seeing touching tasting smelling and these five which are being experienced by us to see the world we are experiencing this world with these five sense perceptions they disappear above the astral stage but two still remain one is seeing and other is listening so listening and seeing stay even repeating goes so when we listen to the words we are repeating we are using an even higher sense of ours so listening is very important it will go beyond even these two levels of physical and astral consciousness and that is why listening is very important and when i will come to tell you better use of listening in the course of this workshop i'll tell you how we use listening more importantly than anything else we'll come to that you can start practicing that listening attentively with concentration right on the words we repeat the other image is seeing in our own old scriptures they call them nirat and surat nirat is the power to see surat is the power to hear or listen so these two are higher than the other five senses and they stay in the causal plane also so that is why using these two seeing and hearing that is why they say this path is called the path of light and sound seeing and hearing light and sound light and sound comes from the fact that this the light and sound will be experienced as seeing and hearing even above the astral plane even above sense perceptions so it's a good idea to know that and to practice listening as early as we can and the earliest time for listening within yourself is listening to the words you are yourself repeating that will help you further in listening to other sounds later on so it's important let's uh, do it once again use also nirat this time i was saying close your inner eyes that means i was saying concentrating on listening now how many of you have been initiated by a master how many of you remember clearly the face of your master okay how many of you do not have a master how many of you who do not have a master have somebody you love okay now in this exercise i am going to make you do next is where we will use both nirat and surat we will use both seeing and listening but within the third eye center within the chamber and that is those who have a master will invite the master to come and sit with them in this chamber and they will remember the face of the master while they are repeating the words and listening they will also see the master most likely repeating the words with them with with you with you master will repeat words 
that's a very good experience to have the master visible to you at the same time you are repeating and listening master is also repeating making it easier for you to listen to the words so those who have a master imagine that master is there with you sitting in front if you are sitting in a chair master will sit in a chair in front if you are sitting on the ground master will sit on the ground in front of you so imagine master sitting in front of you and repeating the words the same way you were repeating so don't close your eyes look at the master and repeat the words and if master joins you good if he doesn't just watch but concentrate while doing this on listening to the words you are repeating and the vision is of the master sitting in front so this this combines what we call simran and dhyan that is a repetition of words and contemplation of the face of the master there are three things that we will be using in our meditation for successful results they have been good for me i have used them i am not going to share anything with you that has not worked with me that is why i am basing everything i share with you on experiences i have gained from this master whose picture you see baba saab and saying these are all his teachings they worked therefore i am sharing with you so therefore the three thing that we use are to locate ourselves first of course then we use repetition of words to control the mind which is called simran or mantra then we use the dhyan that means contemplating the face of the master then we use listening to the sound these three things are sometimes done separately one after the other sometimes done in combination sometimes done in alteration how are they done it all depends on how concentrated our attention is there how much if the mind is running out we are not concentrated that's the only definition that you have concentrated attention at the third eye center will mean that you are really enjoying your being at in the cha- meditation chamber no other thoughts are coming you are listening to the words you are repeating or any sounds that will come later and so you are ha- having a vi- vision of the master dhyan can be done independently can be done with simran can be done with listening to the sounds so that is why these are three things we will be using so right now i want you to have an exercise with me of going back sitting in the sixth floor of your house of meditation in the meditation chamber the center invite your master and those who don't have master invite your beloved and come sit next to you in front and repeat with your utmost attention and see if the beloved also repeats with you close your eyes and begin you will notice that after every session of meditation i rub my eyes and i rub my hands rub my legs because this uh, when we do deep meditation for long periods this helps in getting back to body awareness very quickly so that is just a means of using the uh, rubbing of the hands of eyes to get back to quick body awareness now how many of you enjoyed the session with your beloved and your masters you will notice that when you have the master with you the concentration will be better and i am happy you noticed that how many of you were still thinking of other things even when the master or the beloved was in front of you and you were repeating words with concentration your mind was still going on other things that is where we need practice that is why they say you need practice more practice more practice because of this reason that the mind has so much programming already done to think of other things it generates an experience and then experiences it we think it's only experiencing what is there it generates experiences and then experiences it and this is a old old um, 
activity of the mind which we are carrying the same mind i said this physical body has a very short life compared to the astral this is only 100 years or little more or less and the inner body is a 2000 years more or less 1000 3000 the mind's life is in millions of years of physical time which means we are carrying the same mind in all reincarnations for millions of years very often we carry the same mind till the next dissolution of the whole creation till the parallel comes or the dissolution comes so the karma is carried only on the mind soul has no karma ever soul merely provides life the karma can only exist in time and space and on the mind and that is why the karma generated and stored in the mind and since we have the same mind the same karma keeps on repeating itself even after 100 lives so that is why the mind is a very long thing as our mind same mind that's thinking in you now that mind has such a long life so the mind for the, all this time has been just using it to go out not go in even when it thought it was doing something by way of god realization it was still putting attention on outside things we had to create outside symbols for worship of one who sits inside we are worshiping some power creative power that sits inside us next to the soul and we are looking outside at man made buildings man made statues and images man made places man made things and putting attention outside to discover what is inside that is why for so long we have had the mind practice this so takes now time and practice to get back to inside so there is no other problem it's only because we are used to doing that so practice means do more activities inside you can do more activities this was just a couple of activities i mentioned to you we can do many more activities inside and i'll take a break now but when i come back you have a nice light lunch so you can meditate little more in the afternoon and we will go and do many other activities how many of you like to fly in the sky we'll do that in the afternoon today <laughs> that is one of the inner activities we won't fly with this body but we will fly with the inner body and we'll see what we can see when we fly Okay thank you very much for this first session and I look forward to seeing you 3 o'clock again